You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. And all this stuff you read about a balanced budget, there's nothing balanced about that budget at all. And leaders of several cities complain the new Illinois budget leaves their spending even more unbalanced tonight. That story in a moment, but first more in our breaking news out of Williamson County. Good evening. A crash involving several tractor trailers has shut down part of Interstate 57 northbound at this hour, right at the Williamson Johnson County line. Yeah, Illinois State Police tell us four semis were involved in that crash. News 3's Brandon Morano has spent the last hour or so out there at the scene. Brandon, what is the very latest from there? Well, Carolyn, I uh, just want to give you an exact location of where we're at here. I'm at mile marker 44, right on the Johnson Williamson County line on Interstate 57. Now, about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes ago, Illinois State Police say four tractor trailers crashed here on mile marker 44. Now, we do know that two of them were carrying bananas. Uh, or sorry, one was carrying bananas. You can see the uh, the gentleman in the uh, in the Bobcat there trying to pick those up as quick as he can to get people back on the road. Now, what I do want to stress is that Illinois State Police have said that traffic is closing it. The northbound lane here on Interstate 57 is still closed down at mile marker 44. They're not letting anyone through, so they're asking people to if the, if you're making your way through the Goreville area to take an alternate route. But the good news here, nobody injured. Uh, Illinois State Police have the, the scene pretty much contained. And we're going to try to get a little bit more info uh, for you. But just to recap, I uh, just want to let you guys know that hot, the highway Interstate 57 here is closed at mile marker 40. We're here at mile marker 44. Now, that's where the crash happened. Crews are working to clean it up as quickly as possible. But it looks like it's going to be at least a couple more hours, I'd say conservatively, uh, before they get uh, all this cleaned up here. For now, live in Johnson County, Brandon Murano, News 3. All right, thank you, Brandon. Brandon showing us the traffic there. Take a look at this video just sent to us from a viewer of traffic moving slowly through Goreville. Folks being detoured off of the interstate created this slow moving scene you see here. Again, folks are being asked to avoid the Goreville area right now because of backups just like this. And we have new details tonight on the Illinois budget's impact on the city of Mount Vernon. City leaders say provisions within the budget will cost the city a quarter of a million dollars. As New City's Brandon Richard shows us, those same budget provisions will also hit other communities hard. Brandon. Yeah, that's right. One of those provisions requires communities that collect their own local sales tax to pay a state administrative fee. That includes a lot of cash-strapped communities in southern Illinois just barely hanging on. The Illinois Municipal League says the state will charge municipalities that impose their own local sales taxes a 2% administrative fee. In other words, 2% of the money that belongs to local communities will stay in Springfield. Mount Vernon has to pay that fee. Its leaders say it couldn't come at a worse time. Over the past two years, we've made a lot of cuts. In fact, the city had to make $3 million worth of cuts and had to lay off seven employees. Losing 2% to the state through a new administrative fee leaves city leaders with more tough choices. We're not exactly sure how we're going to maintain a balanced budget this year based on the revenues that will be retained at the state. On top of that, the city manager says more people shopping online and declining sales in four of the city's retail sectors, grocery stores, household furnishing, auto and manufacturing, make things much harder. City leaders will now consider cuts to overtime and eliminate equipment purchases. We'll do everything we can to go through our budgets, see if there's more that we can cut. Given the financial struggles Mount Vernon already faces, City Councilman Jim Rippey blames state lawmakers for adding to them. And all this stuff you read about a balanced budget, there's nothing balanced about that budget at all. If you look at the exodus out of this state and how many they're losing out of Illinois, well, it don't say a lot for us right now. And under another provision, municipalities will receive 10% less in state income tax payments this year, but the total number of payments they'll receive will go up. Analysts say that means communities will see a slight increase in the amount of money they'll receive, but it would only amount to a relative drop in the bucket. 
in the newsroom. Brandon Richard, News 3. Brandon, thanks. SIU's Board of Trustees today approved millions of dollars in cuts to the 2018 operating budget there. It comes as part of a larger plan to right the financial ship on the Carbondale campus. More than half that money will come from not filling vacant positions. The university will also have to spend nearly $7 million to repay money it borrowed from departments for operating costs during the Illinois budget crisis. More cuts could happen in the future to save even more money, including consolidating more than a dozen colleges and eliminating seven degree programs. SIU already cut eight other programs in just the last two years. Meantime, SIU trustees named Dr. Carlo Montemagno as the university's new chancellor. As News 3's Brandon Morano shows us, Montemagno will have a tough job helping the university navigate a path to financial stability. The SIU Board of Trustees has voted to approve Dr. Carlo Montemagno as the university's chancellor. Now this decision comes at a time the university is facing some pretty tough financial problems, so I sat down with former interim chancellor and current professor here at the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute, Dr. John Jackson, to see what challenges Montemagno has ahead. We're in such a transition because of the budget crisis. Dr. John Jackson says because of that, new SIU Carbondale Chancellor Carlo Montemagno will have to handle a crisis of his own. We're going to have a new definition and a new vision of what SIU is going to be about in the future. Like making the decision of what academic programs to keep and which to cut. All of those things that have become our signature are terribly important because they attract students, but they also cost a lot of money. So the SIU Board of Trustees voted to bring the highly qualified Montemagno on board by paying him $340,000 a year, nearly $50,000 more than previous chancellor and now vice president of academic affairs, Brad Caldwell. We have had a lot of turnover at the top. It's been uh, difficult to, to create the kind of stability that we need for the long term. The university hopes Montemagno, who has received more than $100 million in scientific grants, won multiple awards for his scientific work, and was the co-director of NASA's Cell Mimetic Space Exploration Center, can help turn things around at SIU. I reached out to Dr. Montemagno for comment today, and university spokesperson Ray Goldsmith says the university will plan to hold a press conference Monday to introduce Montemagno as the new chancellor. In Carbondale, Brandon Morano, News 3. If former interim chancellor Brad Colwell has a new job tonight. The board appointed him vice president for academic affairs. The position has gone unfilled the last three years. Colwell will make $230,000 a year in the new role after serving as interim chancellor from the fall of 2015 until the beginning of this month. He starts his new job Monday rain out there today for some of us. Here's Jim with our first look at weather. And then the rain moved away from many of us. Some of us actually got some relief. Others just a few drops here and there. But once the rain moved out, the sun popped out. Boy, the heat and humidity really jumped in on top of us. And checking on temperatures right now, Poplar Bluff reporting 91, 90 in Jonesboro and here. Now, Campbell Hill reporting 73 degrees. There are a couple of showers and storms showing up on radar where it's raining. It's cooling things off. That's what's going on in Campbell Hill. The Ava Campbell Hill corner there in Jackson County seeing some thunderstorm activity. It's stretching up into Perry County. More cells firing up now towards Nashville and Washington County. All of this will continue to move to the south. You can see there's kind of a line running behind the banner. We think that line is slowly going to move through the region tonight. Most everyone should see at least a passing shower. Some of us could see some heavy rain. I think it's going to be a pretty organized line of storms that moves through. Should be through here by midnight 1 a.m. for most of us. A little break. Uh, we'll put partly cloudy up for 3 a.m. But a couple of more waves go through tomorrow bringing more chances for showers and storms. We'll look at that in the forecast in just a few minutes. Jim, thanks on the consumer watch tonight. Folks in southern Illinois can now get groceries delivered to their door. Retail delivery service Instacart now lets us shop from home without stepping foot in a storefront. News 3's Evie Allen shows us how it works. This way of shopping can easily be done through an app, but if you don't have a smartphone, all you have to do is go to the Instacart website from any computer and start picking out items. First, how to pick out a good, uh, you know, a good avocado. It gives us a way to have someone pick up our milk and eggs for a virtual grocery store. Thursday, Instacart grocery delivery service launched in Southern Illinois, partnering with Schnucks, Petco, and CVS. You pick the items you want. You'll see pictures of most every single thing. You put it in your cart, you get your total. You proceed to checkout. 
Um, that's when you pay for it on your credit card. Then someone will pick up every item in the store for you and deliver it to your home all within an hour. It was really good because I was in constant contact with him and there was one item that he had to replace and he asked me to approve it and I just approved it. Schnooks hired around 45 new employees to do the shopping. For more information about the program and promotions for new customers, go to this story after the newscast on our website, WSILTV.com. In Carbondale, Evie Allen, News 3. That looks pretty neat. Very interesting. Well, a driver tries to escape from police and he hits an officer. We'll show you what happened next. Plus, after growing concerns about production in central Illinois, we check in on the local corn crop. You're watching News 3 at 6. You're watching News 3 with Dennis Turner, Carolyn Serta, Chief Meteorologist Jim Razor and Sports with Darren Kennard. How does this year's corn crop look? Well, it depends on where you live. Some farmers in central Illinois say their stocks have barely reached knee height. Yeah, but as News 3's Hannah Gabrisolasi shows us, southern Illinois farmers have seen their crop grow tall and green. At seven years old, Tony Boyle knew he wanted to get into the agriculture industry. As a little kid, I'd always go up and, you know, go on my great grandpa's, you know, farm and see everything. And I was kind of hooked then. He studied agriculture systems at SIU, eventually becoming a crop specialist at Southern FS in Jackson County. And one of the biggest crops he focuses on? Corn. You see inside, nice kernels. Boyle says he works with over 60 farms, including UHH Clark Farm. And experts tell me they're expecting about a quarter million of harvestable ears of corn on this eight acre plot. They're pretty well made. A lot of what I do is, is try to, you know, be the eyes and ears for a lot of my, my growers to produce the best product that they can. He says part of what makes the corn so harvestable is the weather in southern Illinois, which, unlike other parts of the state, has been favorable. I wish I could say that for everyone, but we've been very fortunate. Dr. Jason Bond from SIU says the condition of corn crop in southern Illinois changes depending on the amount of rain received in the last month. Both he and Boyle agree they would like to see more rain. Mother Nature can grace us with some rain across the you know, southern part of the state. The state and make a lot of guys happy. Reporting from Jackson County, Hannah Gebrasalasi, News 3. Experts add that foliar diseases are starting to increase, which would impact corn production, but so far no reports of southern rust affecting the crop in southern Illinois, but the industry is cautiously keeping an eye out for it. Sunny and hot this afternoon out at Wolf Creek. Will we keep having to dodge rain clouds as we head into the weekend? Jim's forecast is up next. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 Weather. Many of us saw a passing thunderstorm today, a little bit of rain that helped uh, local gardens and fields and such, but I've already heard from at least two folks that have said, I didn't get anything. Well, one of them sitting at one drop, so there's some spots out there still looking for rain. The good news there is there are at least two more chances for rain coming in, and almost three showing up uh, in the guidance package right now. One is almost immediately on top of us. We can see this line that is filling in in our northernmost counties right now. Some individual cells out ahead of that line. They're not directly associated associated with what's going on right here. What's going on in Franklin County, Perry County, Jackson County, actually from some of the uh, jet flow, I think ahead of that line. So that batch may continue to move off toward the uh, Rend Lake while this line is going to continue to move off to the south. And that's why I think everyone sees a chance for more passing rain as we move through tonight. Some of the showers may not be to western Kentucky until midnight or so and then start to move out of the region. Now everyone saw the humidity jump up today. Dew point readings, some of these readings are about as big as we see. Upper 70s, close to 80 degrees, about as big as the dew point ever gets locally. And we've got a whole bunch of 77s. Poplar Bluff right now at 78. Temperatures continuing to run close to 90, even into the 90s. Marion reporting 93 right now. So heat index values here as we're moving into the evening hours, still topping triple digits for almost everyone. Murray, one of the exceptions at 98. But Harrisburg, 105. Carbondale reporting 106 
in Marion, currently 90 degrees over a dew point of 76. South wind showing up at 4, a big gust of 27. I've got something going on here. I'm in western Williamson County, and south winds just picked up 10 to 15 miles an hour. So there is some wind flow out there around some of these thunderstorms. Satellite imagery showing that flow I was talking about ahead of the line. You see some of the cells moving to the north and then being deflected by the line. It will get scooped up, that energy, that moisture, and then be pushed to the south uh, as this line continues its move. I think it's going to be a relatively slow move. Some of the storms could produce some strong winds. We might see a little hail. I don't think that's going to be a big problem, but locally, very heavy rain certainly is a possibility. Skycast, if we put everything into motion, there's the cold front moving completely through the region. The back edge of it likely not going to move through until late tomorrow afternoon, maybe tomorrow evening. So that chance for rain will linger until that front is completely gone. For tonight, it means the isolated storms around tonight probably turning into a line of storms moving through. No big risk of severe weather, but I wouldn't rule out some strong storms that could produce some damaging wind gusts. Chance of rain lingers into tomorrow if we count just after midnight into the early morning hours and the little chance tomorrow afternoon. I still think it's a better than 50% chance we see activity on local radar. Little break for the weekend. If we can get some rain and satisfy the farmers and gardeners with this, then we don't have to feel guilty about looking forward to a dry weekend, partly cloudy to mostly sunny there, with a break from the humidity. Doesn't last long. By the time we're back into next week, I think the energy rolls back in, the humidity rolls back in, and so does the small chance for pop-up storms. Mm, and those folks that maybe just got the one drop, they still have the, the chance. <laughs> I hope this next <laughs> rain comes in and takes care of them. All right. Thanks, Jim. A breaking news update now. Check out this video we just got in the newsroom from Sky 3 of that big crash on Interstate 57. You can see the destruction there of those four semis that we know were involved in this crash. It happened near the 44 mile marker. That's in the northbound lanes and state police had to shut down those northbound lanes. And we know at last check those lanes remained closed. This is near the Interstate 24 split. That's near the Williamson Johnson County line. We of course will stay on scene and bring you any updates as soon as they are available. Caught on camera tonight. Officers say an Iowa woman tried to run down her town's police chief during a high speed chase through a busy downtown area. Officers say the driver who had warrants for her arrest had drugs in her vehicle when she hit the chief. She got he got right back up and chased her down the street, a chase that eventually reached 75 to 80 miles an hour. Eventually, the driver and her two passengers abandoned the car and tried to run. Cops caught up with them shortly after. Yikes. We'll be right back with sports. This is News 3 Sports in HD. Well, two thirds of the world is covered in water, so there is a huge portion of the planet you could only see via scuba diving. Our Maddie Sattler headed to Mermet Springs in our neck of the woods to take a dive in this week's Maddie on the Move. Southern Illinois lakes and rivers provide a number of different areas to explore. This week, I wanted to go below the surface, so I headed down to Mermet Springs. It's one of the hidden treasures I think that people really don't know about. We train more than 400 divers per year, and we run group travel literally around the world. And they have programs for both beginners and experienced divers. You can come here and learn to dive. We have a full service dive shop and dive center. We're the catalyst for a tremendous amount of travel all over the world. So for beginners, Mermet Springs offers a tri scuba program. I was paired with dive instructor Yule Sharp, and first we went over the equipment and information I would need for the dive. Come, I'm going to teach you while you're down there how to clear the mask. Put your fingers in this corners right here, and then look up and take a breath through your regulator, and then blow out through your nose. No thumbs. I've and we will actually do that before you go into water because the first time you do it, you'll choke. Okay. <laughs> this is your BC, your buoyancy compensator. Do I go down fast? No. Okay. Because we're going to have to clear your ears. So okay. that's what I breathe out of? Correct. Your teeth go on these pads there. Okay. And your lips wrap around the outside. Try to breathe just as fast and deep as you can. <laughs> You're never going to outbreathe it. I feel like a monster. I'm going to say okay. Okay only gets three answers. Okay, eh, something's wrong, or uh-uh, this is up. If I go okay and you go, 
I think you're going to go into the surface. Okay. So don't do this. Unless you want to go up. Okay. 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 And so now it's time for you to start getting into your wetsuit. This might be the most complicated thing I've ever worn. So I was dressed and ready. All I had to do was get to the dock. So lean forward. Not that much, but just lean forward just a little bit. We're waddling down. We got in and I got acclimated to the water. Remember I told you the first thing you're going to do is choke? Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> See? I'm getting better, but that's hard. Go ahead and breathe. And just go face down. There we go. She's actually relaxing now. Then, just yeah. dive right in. You ready? Mm -hmm. We found the fish hot dogs. My first time scuba diving and seeing what Southern Illinois has to offer below the surface was a success. Reporting from Mermet Springs, this is Maddie on the Move. Can't wait to see what next week holds. <laughs> That's a pretty neat place. They have everything you would need there too. Yeah. Definitely. And Maddie seemed to, you know, accomplish it all. So sure good is. for her. All right, thanks, Darren. Sure. We'll be right back. Remember those Tickle Me Elmo's that became all the rage a few years ago? Well, another Sesame Street character got some new buzz for a little something different in his belly. Yeah, it turns out Cookie Monster was eating something a little less sweet. A traffic stop in Florida turned up this Cookie Monster stuffed with cocaine. The driver of that car has now been charged with drug trafficking. Cookie Monster is expected to be okay, though. And if you ever found yourself in a tight spot and needed some cash, well, your situation likely didn't get as bad as one guy in Texas. The repairman literally got stuck inside the ATM. He didn't have his phone, so he slept notes to people, getting cash, asking for help. A few hours later, police and his boss helped get him free. Lucky him. And another breaking news update for you now. Let's take another look at this exclusive video from Sky 3 over that crash on Interstate 57 in Williamson County. It happened near the 44 mile marker in the northbound lanes at the Johnson Williamson County line. Four semis crashed, blocking both lanes of traffic. State police had to shut down those northbound lanes and divert traffic over to, uh, to uh, Goreville, which has uh, got a lot of heavy traffic going through it right now. We'll have an update coming for, up for you live on News 3 at 630. That's right. Brandon Morano will bring us the very latest then, so do not go anywhere. We'll be right back again in one minute for News 3 at 630.